Hello there and welcome back to Manor Lords. It's episode 3 of this preview series. As you might be able to tell, the town is growing a bit. The town is sort of centered around the church at the moment, as I believe most of the older towns were. I'm building a couple of new housing plots over here in order to fit new people. I need to get more people in because I need more workers. I need more families and the families need to do my bidding so I can tax them. No, it's not quite that bad. I'm trying to grow the town and especially level up the town. And I don't really have enough workers to do just that. Now, what has happened is these four plots have been added, as I mentioned. I survived the winter and it is now March. So it is spring. And that's quite nice because while it rains, at least the seasonal deposits are going to regrow. So the berries over here are growing. Now, of course, the wild animals, not as much. I am going to tell these guys to forego this for a minute and work on the forager hut instead. Um, as for the luxury resources, we have plenty of leather for now. So we should be able to make use of that for a while. Keep everybody happy in the marketplace with their clothing. However, I think it's time to start having a look at farming. Because either to the south or to the north, we have an okay amount of land available. So, might as well get to work on that. The problem with a farm is that it tends to take a lot of work. And you need a lot of people. Both of those, not ideal. Also, it's a pretty big tech tree. Once you're getting a farmhouse, that's only step one. Because then you get a field. Great, you get crops. For example, wheat, flax or barley. But you can't eat those. So we're going to have to put that into a windmill to turn grain into flour. And then we're going to have to turn flour into bread. So essentially we need a lot of workers for the farm, like the field. And then we need to put workers in the windmill. And then we need to put them in the... Well, <laughs> not in. But let's say put them to work on the communal oven, not in. Alternatively, I can go for a sheep farm. It's going to give me wool, but I don't believe it will give me actual food. And that is the thing that I'm going for. But for now, let's just bite the bullet and have a look at where I can find some pretty decent farming terrain. It looks to be everywhere, at least on my plot of land. So that's very beneficial. I think this is... yeah. It's not the best spot, but we can make do. Okay, the field. The fields need to be very large, and they also take a long time to plow. You can boost this by getting a heavy plow, which will allow an oxen to plow the land. So that's going to make the farming more efficient. There's also another factor, and that is fertility. For fields, um, if you just excessively farm them, they tend to not do that well. Because at some point, the land has lost its fertility. So what the game recommends you do, yes, yes, what the game recommends you do is leave these fields fallow for, well, a while. They regenerate fertility, but they have no yield. So that is a bit of a problem. What I'm going to do is set crop rotation. So the first year is going to be wheat. Uh, the second year is going to be fallow. And then the third year, maybe we can do wheat again. We're talking years here. This is not a fast process. This takes a lot of time. You can fence them up if you so desire. Um, allows to use a fallow field as a pasture. Which then rapidly restores the fertility. But at the moment I don't have the tech yet. I don't have fertilization. So unfortunately that's not going to happen anytime soon. The popularity at 63% should be good enough to start attracting some new people. And with my growing influence, I am planning on eventually laying claim on another region. But for now, it is much more important to get additional people here to increase the taxation. And potentially build a bigger defensive force. Because there are not only bandits over here, but there are also raiders about. So that's fun. Uh, best make sure that the raiders are not going to be that much of a problem. I don't exactly understand this countdown because it seems to be not counting down in real time um, it says 342 at first I thought that was going to be seconds it is not seconds because it doesn't tick down well 
at all, almost. So that's a bit weird. Um, there might be raiders about, and maybe this tower is going to come in useful at some point. For now, though, not really that big of a deal. Interesting to see that there are two residing families here. They're working at my manor. Can I see inside the manor? No, unfortunately not. The game is not that detailed. Anyway, I'm going to skip a bit of time and wait for more population to come in. A little later, the farmhouse and the field are getting worked on. A new family has arrived in town. And these people are going to have to work very hard. Because this is a pretty big field. Um, these things are measured in morgans. Now, I had to look that up. A morgan is essentially two British acres. Or 0.8 hectares. So, yeah. That's the, the amount of work that they still have ahead of them. And since they're not actually using an ox, well, that's going to have to be a lot of plowing. And this is why the farmhouse allows you to put a lot of different families to work. It also comes with a massive generic storage and pantry. So if you have the capability of actually getting a lot of this field plowed and then eventually sown and harvested, you're going to be able to get a lot of food out of this. But this is likely going to take about a year before we'll see any kind of crop results. So it's more of a long-term project, but once we have that much wheat, I can probably turn it into quite a lot of food. Speaking of, food is turning into a bit of a challenge. Thankfully, the animals, the wild animals, are regrowing, and so are the berries. So I can turn a couple of the people, let's say, away from the woodcutter's lodge. I don't need to have that much firewood right now. I got enough for a year. Let's put these people to work on... Well, I think it's going to have to be the wild animals, because I have to keep my people happy by providing various different sources of meat. I have noticed that these wild animals tend to migrate a bit. Sometimes you get a notification that says the wild animals have migrated, and that means that they have popped from here, for example, to over there. It makes sense. Sometimes there might not be prey for them, there might not be food for them, so they move. And in this case, that's exactly what they have done. So you might occasionally see wild animals move. As for the next region, um, which one would I like? Over here we got a couple of berries. Why are there... Hold on, which way are you guys moving? Where are the ravenous vultures going? This is a mercenary company. And it's not alone. There's brigands. There's another light mercenary company. Oh, this is all the ravenous vultures. Hold on. Did somebody hire those? Is that's what's happening? Yeah, they're not available for hire anymore. Hmm. It is possible that the AI has hired these guys. And is planning on sending them somewhere. Somewhere to me. Perhaps that is the raid that I should be worried about. Um, if so, I am in a lot of trouble. Because this is 36, 16, another 36, another 36. That's <laughs> about three times my population. I can't win that. As for this region, we have a clay deposit. We have a rich deposit of wild animals. That could be a nice hunting ground. Stone, iron, and berries. Not bad. A rich stone deposit could make this into my primary stone. Yeah, this is going to be my mining province. This region has both a rich iron and a rich stone deposit. And if I am correct, then you can... I'm not sure if there's... If the tech is here already or it's... Yeah, here. Uh, upgrade to a deep mine. Enables the building to extract resources indefinitely if placed over a rich deposit. So, a, a deposit like this is going to run out. This is going to run out. Actually, it's kind of running out already. There's only 44 left. The ones over here, they just do not run out at all. Now, I wonder... I can get influence... By taking down a bandit camp. Can I do that by proxy? Can I send... Hold on, I think somebody else might have done it by proxy. Maybe the AI was also getting quite tired of getting raided. 
And the AI being Selblitz or Hofstetten. And maybe they sent out the bandits. There's still a bandit camp over there, though. I'm curious to see if we're going to see these guys engage the bandits. It would not go well for the bandits. Yep, they're having a go. That is going to go pretty poorly for the brigands. The Light Mercenary Company, though, does not have a whole lot of effectiveness, but they have 36 men versus 16. Yeah, they're pushing them back already, and there comes number two. <laughs> and number three. And the melee is complete. Um, Is it possible for me to swoop in? That would be pretty funny. Rally the troops, do it there. Ooh, another... other. Yeah, this is problematic. Another ruler's army was sighted. I think trying to snipe is not quite going to work. Yeah, they're getting it. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your service. I guess we will not have to worry about those bandits anymore. Problematically, however, that does give them more influence. And as such, they might start expanding into regions that I want. If I'm going to build my influence out more... We're going to have to do something else. Because taking down bandit camps is not going to work. So I have to raise the settlement level. I have to enact a policy or conquer a bandit camp. Now the game is telling me to adopt a policy. But the policies that are here... I don't find very interesting. I can do hunting grounds. Wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast. Great. But at the moment, I don't have a rich deposit of wild animals. So I don't want that one. And strict fasting is going to have citizens skip every fifth meal. Reducing food consumption, but also decreasing approval. I need approval in order to keep my town growing. So I don't want either of those policies. What I might be able to do is reduce taxation for the moment. And with that, make my area a bit more interesting. And maybe... Yeah. So, let's do this. Take 20% of food for the church and get that as influence. We're in 576 now. Let's just keep that growing. Just as my citizens were starting to feel, well, a bit safe, yet another bandit camp has been sighted. The guys are back and they are probably going to start stealing my stuff if I don't stop them. Now, this time around, I'd like to be a bit better prepared. So what I can do is have one of these burger pots, the level 2, and have one of them get into a bowyer's workshop. It's going to allow me to do the production of war bows. It does convert all the inhabitants of this house into artisans. So they're going to be locked in as a bowyer. As for other potential weapons, like I can turn them into a blacksmith, but I don't really have a stable supply of metal. Um, that's a bit of a problem. I'm not quite there yet. But Warbows, maybe I can do that. So let's start that production up. And make that a high priority production. Because with the Warbows, maybe I could just have a, let's say, a second group. What I would like to get is an Archer Militia. And unfortunately for those, that's what I need the Warbows for. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to get that operational. As for the amount of arrows, I'm not so sure, but I suspect that this burgage plot, this one over here, the Fletcher shop is going to work on that as well. Unfortunately, um, I don't have that many families available at the moment, so I'm going to pull one of them off the farm. I did build a second farm, a second field, that is. This one is also going to start using wheat as its crop type, but it'll probably not be ready this particular harvest season. It's already July. We are going to be harvesting in September slash November. And this other field might actually be ready. Because in 59 days, more or less, we can start harvesting the place. So, for now, this one family that I have working on the farm is just there to do, well, maintenance here, shall we say. <laughs> just plowing. Lots and lots and lots of plowing. Although, honestly, I'm not too sure if it's going to be actually useful. Because they'll plow now. By the time that they're done with that, which is probably halfway through August, um, I might have no real business for them to do. 
Actually, let's take them off of this field. Might be more useful that way. And see if I can actually put them to work in, for example, the Fletcher shop. Something else I've found is that this can also be used to do the development of food. Produces bread from flour with twice the efficiency of the communal oven. Again, it does lock your people into this occupation. So that's a bit of a downside. But hey, if that means I can skip using the oven and I can get bread, that would be another great source of food. I just need to have one other item, and that is the windmill. Converts the grain into the flour. Now, windmills do like to have a bit of room. Um, if you put them, for example, in the middle of town, for some strange reason, they actually get pretty good decent efficiency here, 90%. Uh, over here, it's 90, 95. Over here, once we start getting into more foresty area, yeah, there's not enough wind there for them. Over here, there was a 97. 93, 98, 95. Yeah, I think this can work. It's not that big of a trek from the farm either. If I put it here... Yeah, looking at too many trees in the way. So, let's put the windmill over there. Pretty low priority project. Because I'm only going to need that once all of this has been harvested. But I'd rather have it ready and not need it than the other way around. As for fuel, let's get to work on that, because I kind of neglected the woodcutter's lodge for the moment. Only put one worker in there. But I can only have one worker building things right now, and that's fine. The rest of them are going to start prepping for the next winter. Because it feels like that one's always around the corner. It's month seven. A few more months, and all of a sudden it's winter. And if that jumps you, well, good luck in winter. Urgent, urgent, urgent. We have an army invading us. We're going to scramble the troops. Rally the troops as quickly as possible because we're getting absolutely raided over here. Um, let's go, boys. Bring the war, well, the archers as well as the spears. This place is on fire. Well, flash update has been destroyed. Uh, the... Good lord, even the market's on fire. Immediately, the Spear Militia is making short work of the Brigands. I hope that my archery crew is going to be able to do anything useful. Uh, do you really need to traverse the roads? As far as I'm concerned, you don't. You just need to get your butts into cover and start taking these guys down. I wonder how it's going to work together. Because I'm not so sure what's going to happen here. They are prepping to go on the attack. This looks pretty problematic. Yep. Archers are going at it. I'm not sure if that's going to cause friendly fire. Let's give them a little bit of ground. Yeah. All this stuff's been destroyed. Fine, rebuild, rebuild the mill. I think they're gonna rebuild the marketplace all by themselves. Damn brigands. I was hoping I had more time. Come on, gentlemen. Where are you? Half of them are shooting from inside the building, by the looks of it. Yep, there goes my improvements, because I'm currently losing. I do appear to have taken down all the bad guys. So, let's say that... Friendly fire mode, no thank you. Um, I can disband this unit. And we're going to disband this unit, well... Might as well press on. Take down the bandit camp. It's gonna be a bit of a trek for them, and I hope that the other men can deal with the fires. Damn it. This is going to take a lot of reconstruction. We are trying to put out the fire. There we go. Rebuild. Market stalls are also getting fixed up. Time for some payback, gentlemen. Go raid that bandit camp for me. There we go. Now, we're definitely going to send the resources to my town. 
because my town has uh, been hit a bit hard. But by taking down that resource or that bandit camp, I do get influence. So we're now at 900. Actually, it's over 900. And that means I'm just 100 away from being able to claim another province, such as this one, Wolfbrand. That's my mining economics. Or at least that's the plan for it. So that's what I'm going to go for. Now, with all the issues that I have going on, of course, some needs are not going to be met. Food stall supply is bad. Uh, clothing stall, I think it might have been destroyed. Because the tannery is no longer functioning. So it's time to get my guys back. Effectiveness 12%. Uh, get them back and disband the unit so that they're going to be available again for actual work. Oh, you're still not in the home region? There we go. Disband. Plenty of work to be done. Mostly in fixing everything back up. But hey, it could have been worse. They could have tried burning down the farm. Which would have been a lot worse. A little later, and once again, we got raiders coming in. So it's time to once again call the army. We're going to need these people to start forming up quickly. Because the bandits, the brigands, are already here. They're walking through the snow as it's already February, and I have been busy. Not so much waiting for these gentlemen, but uh, they're an unpleasant surprise. No, I've been building additional burgesses, burgage plots. And with these plots, I already kept in mind that I need to have a bit of an additional room for a backyard extension. So with this, if I can upgrade all of these in order to, um, or sorry, upgrade them to level two, I can start turning them into bakeries, smiths, breweries, I just need to get the appropriate research. For now, though, let's go deal with a couple of brigands. These are the spearmen. Set these up in a line. Where's the archery group? Wait, you guys weren't cold? Here we are. The archers are still forming up. We're 16 for 18, so that's a pretty bad fight for now. So let's give a bit of terrain. Give ground, luring the enemy to follow. These, fire at will. At this point, I have a ton of arrows. I'm just not really sure, <laughs> or a, ton of, a ton of bows. I'm not really sure what to do with them. I don't know how to tell this Fletcher to stop. So I am queuing up loads and loads and loads of bows automatically. And honestly, I don't even know how to sell them. If I can. Maybe diplomacy is going to help me with that. What are you guys doing? Just form one big line and get to work. That's more like it. My spear militia is having a rough time of it. But these guys... Well, I'm not really sure what they're doing. Yeah, dying, <clears throat> thanks to the archers. Let's not run. Set up a new line here. Let the archers do some work. Come on. I'm trying to keep you guys safe, but I do need you to do your job. There we go. Yes! We've broken them. The brigands are leaving. Good couple of them left, but uh, not all of them are alive. And with that, I might need to set up a burning pit. Uh, where was that residential? Yes, a corpse pit. Not all deserve to be buried on consecrated ground. Use this building to get rid of any raider corpses quickly. Workers become a grave diggers. So, we're going to set up this pit like... Uh, I don't know. It's not something you want to have next to your house, I presume. So, we're going to have to put it next to the farm? Not a great spot, but okay. These guys, disband and disband. I feel like the archers are doing very good work. And I'm very happy to see them perform that well. Sure enough, the spearmen are taking a bit of a hit here and there. But, well, the archers, they're definitely dealing the damage. So that's excellent. There we go, we now have a uh, 14, no, 18 families living here. 
So we're definitely making progress. And it is March. So with that, it's springtime. And the seasonal things are starting to grow back. Which means that the berries are going to be an option again. Not a moment too soon because I'm going to need food. As for uh, plowing, I can start doing that as well, I think. No, it has to be in autumn. Crap. Because I think neither of D2 fields are ready. I'm not sure what exactly what happened to the, the let's say, the primary field. But it just kind of reset. Maybe because it thought it was going to go into the second year. Let's set two additional families on the farm. And get them to work on plowing everything. This wheat field actually gets higher priority. Over this one. Because this has a better... Um, what you call it? Fertility. So this one's going to be more efficient to use. Now, three months of food is not a good situation to be in. And I do have some berries coming up here. The wild animals are coming back. Wild animals are already getting hunted as well, so that's good. Maybe I need to spend a bit of money. Because some of these plots, they already have goat sheds. Uh, these guys can still get goat sheds, or actually chickens. That's going to give me food. Um, over here we already have chickens. These guys cannot have anything because they're too small. These burgage plots have carrots, so vegetable gardens. Yeah, unfortunately we're not getting any vegetables. I think the plots might be a little too small to actually be efficient. Oh well. Now, with these additional plots and all of these, I do see my time growing nicely. I'm getting... Actually, I have passed the 1k influence. That's excellent. Okay, then I'm going to leave you guys here. And next episode, claim this. Waldbrand. Waldbrand is going to be claimed and will be my center of industry. Stone deposits, iron deposits. Let's get to work. In the future episode, that is. Thank you for watching this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon for more.